Now the real fun comes in when you use this modulation oscillator to start bending what's happening with the master oscillator. I'm going to simplify things here with just a little bit of wave folding. There we go. Now initially I could use the modulation section just as a low frequency oscillator to change the amplitude or the pitch of the sound to get tremolo and vibrato. We'll go to amplitude modulation, increase the modulation index, or frequency modulation just to get a little bit of a pitch warble. Now something interesting about the modulation oscillator in the verbose is it only puts out positive voltages. Everything is unipolar. Let's go ahead and look at, say for example, it's triangle wave. It's going at a very low frequency, but as I dial it up, you can see there just exists above the waveform from the master oscillator. Same for the square, same for the sawtooth. Go back down to a slow pitch warble. A consequence of this being just a positive going waveform is that it only shifts the frequency upward and it only opens up the amplitude in a positive direction. Since the frequency modulation on the verbose's internal bus is exponential, that means once you set a musical interval for vibrato, it will stay the same as you play it up and down the keyboard. A side effect is though, it means that the frequency modulation effects are a bit more aggressive. The positive nature of the modulating waveforms also has some implications when we start enveloping its amount, and I'll show you that later. Now when things get more interesting is when this modulation oscillator is pushed up into the audio range. Then new harmonics are created. Now right now it's staying on the same pitch, so when I go off this C that I've tuned things to, go out of tune. So I'm going to need to make it track my keyboard as well. I could just take an output from my buffered molt, go into the volt per octave input and retune this, or I could go ahead and put it through something like a precision adder to quickly change to different octaves. We'll keep it simple for now and just direct connect it. creates a nice fat sound on the bass. Remove the envelope from the wave folder. Increase the modulation index. Notice that the pitch shifted upward as we change the modulation index. That was a consequence of this voltage being positive going. Its average is going to be positive, so therefore we're going to have a positive shift in the pitch. And again, we can further change the output with the wave folder section. Oh, now that's a rich sound. A little bit of enveloping to the wave folder. A little extra attack there. Now again, things get more interesting when we envelope depths of modulation or depths of change to our timbre. In this case, we can go ahead and envelope the depth of that modulation index. So I'm going to turn that down. I'm going to steal my envelope from my wave shaper. This is where you need even more envelopes. Put into the modulation input and start raising the amount that's being let through as this envelope opens and closes. I'll go to a slower decay just so you can hear it. Increase the modulation index so even when the decay is going all the way down to zero, the sustain level, we'll still have some modulation going on. And different wave shapes will produce different changes in the waveform and different harmonics.
Now that is an interesting sound with a very complex attack, and be good for percussion, things like that. However, that pitch shift during the envelope of the modulation index does make it harder to use this in a melodic sense. Well, you can bring in another oscillator, such as the Moog Zone oscillator, into the linear FM input, and use something that's maybe a little bit more balanced, a little bit more on pitch. Linear FM tends to stay more tonal, doesn't have as much problems with pitch shifting, and the Moog's oscillators are balanced around zero volts. So let's go ahead and bring that in briefly. I'm going to pull the modulation for now so you can hear what's going on more clearly. Turn down the modulation index. You hear that what that pitch shift was like. Grab the sawtooth output from the Moog's own oscillator, which looks like this, by the way, that pink wave shape, and feed that into the FM input for our master oscillator. Increase the FM depth. Get a richer sound, tune them together. Nice sound that does not shift as much in pitch as I change the index. Just changes the timbre. Now, if I want to actually envelope that, like I was doing here with the modulation index, I would need to take it through our external VCA. Well, we can do that. Let's go ahead and take that sawtooth, where it's audio at this point, put it to the input of my VCA, take the output of the VCA to the FM input on that oscillator, then we'll take this modulation source and make that my control voltage. So we can go ahead and either just manually open up the VCA. I'll turn down the CV mount for now. Modulation or envelope it. So even though you have a complex oscillator, you're not locked into using just it to modulate itself. It usually has inputs, so you can bring in outside sources. In this case, I happen to personally like the sound of taking the Moog's bipolar balance oscillator into the linear FM input on the Verbos.